Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Enabling network as a service functionality is becoming an important capability for many CSPs as they map out their future technology and services roadmaps. Well, here to discuss the potential value of NAS to operators is Raj Yavadka, who is Chief Technology Officer for Juniper Networks. Hello Raj, very good to see you. Now, as we know, there are many different views and definitions of network as a service. So how do you define NAS? That's a very good question. I think uh, I just want to give you some history of how the network as a service came about. It really started with software defined networking as a principle where people wanted to centralize a control plane to configure a layer to layer three switches. Then it evolved to what we call ST band as a service today, where we went away from circuits to more providing tunnels on demand, right? And then SASE is adding security to that. That's how the network as a service has evolved. And it has been now considered equivalent to pay as you go service. But that is not sufficient because at the same time, in the last few years, networking has evolved rapidly because of the hyperscalers providing public cloud. So you have public cloud, you have VPC networking within public cloud, you have edge cloud, you have Metro or VAN, uh, you have on-prem, both virtual overlay networking and physical networking. Then of course you have private 5G, Wi-Fi and so on. So really, if you want to consider network as a service, you have to consider it across all these domains. So I look at network as a service as an on-demand, creation and termination of end-to-end -end networks across all these domains in minutes with security functions enabled and with proper performance isolation and security isolation. Thanks, Raj. Now, as you explained there, the industry is going through this, this evolution, this deep transformation with cloud edge computing and more distributed workforces and applications. Why, therefore, should operators consider adopting a network as a service model? I think that's a very uh, good point, right? Because if you look at enterprises, due to public cloud, first of all, they're getting used to this consumption-based model, right? As you said, we are going through a big transformation with distributed workforce. People come and go, they join the networks and go. They are no longer sitting in offices. We have distributed applications, SaaS transformations. All of those, if you look at it, the enterprises are looking at the public cloud as a model where the network, whether in a VPC, inter-VPC, connecting to the cloud, it's all software driven, it's all virtual, it's API driven. They expect the same model to be enabled across all the domains they have to deal with. It may it be Wi-Fi, it could be private 5G, it could be on-prem data center networking, it could be cloud connectivity and so on. So that's number one. Number two, I think um, um, if you look at it from operator's perspective, this is an opportunity for them to create new sources of soft revenue. Because today they are getting more and more relegated to be big pipe providers. If you can enable such services, on-demand services across these domains, you can start monetizing that. And that's a consumption-based model is software driven, but underlying physical infrastructure continues to play an important role to enable that. Finally, the operators also have to be very much aware of the fact that hyperscalers are moving closer and closer to the edge of the network and closer to the enterprises. So if you want to continue to be relevant, you have to provide services on par with hyperscalers to the enterprises so they continue to be your customers. And this is very important in the context of what has happened if you look at it from MVNO's perspective. The operators already enable MVNO as a model to allow virtual end-to-end -end network to be residing on top of the physical network. So any third party could provide a virtual network service. But that is not sufficient because that's still going back to providing only bit pipes. What network as a service enables or allows operators to do to really offer value added services based on security isolation, performance isolation, using end to end slicing so that they can start generating revenues from enterprises for different types of services.
Raj, this is all very encouraging news, but how far are we from achieving network as a service? And what are the key activities happening now around this technology? That's a very good question. I think uh, we are uh, evolving. We are not there yet, but we have made a very good start. So for example, beyond SASE and its demand, which are really truly network as a service being delivered today, right? People are beginning to look at extending that model to edge cloud, to the uh, Kubernetes-based overlay networks, both in cloud as well as on-prem, uh, to Wi-Fi and so on. So I think there are multiple efforts such as in industry standardization, such as NIFIO, EMCO, uh, um, which is Edge Multi-Cloud Orchestration Project in Linux Foundation. Uh, you have Kubernetes-based networking, which allows you to really um, uh, automate uh, intent-driven configuration and operation of the networks. So those are the new developments which are happening in different domains. The problem is that each of these domains is being addressed in isolated fashion. This is where an opportunity is there to really define network as a service, which is uniformly defined, API driven across all these domains, starting from 5G, edge, metro, cloud, as well as on. And what are the market opportunities for operators and why are you and Juniper excited about its future? So operators are a very important part of our customer. Just like hyperscalers are big customers of ours, operators traditionally have been a big customers. We deliver products and services to them. And we look at this as an opportunity for operators to continue to evolve and take advantage of the market transformations. We are excited about it because we have this strategy for deliver what we call client to cloud secure assured networks, which is cloud managed, AI ops driven. And we started with missed Wi Fi, right? Where we, it's a cloud managed, AI ops driven, assured service. We extended that to campus and branch networks and access networks. Now we are extending that to cloud metro and data center and private 5G and 5G. When you do that, I think you start defining a uniform architecture, uniform platform, client to cloud, which is API driven, which allows you to abstract out network as a service, no matter which domain you are delivering on. Enterprises get to see it as a client to cloud model, so they can now start consuming services across all these domains without having to worry about, they get security, they get that performance uh, assurance, but also they get uh, on-demand creation and termination of networks. So we are excited that we can enable our customers, operators, to start delivering these services in a uniform manner. Now, for mobile service providers that already deliver services via the cloud, how is this evolution different? For a mobile service operator, it is important to understand that they have not just think about the mobile networks or radio access network. They have to start thinking about their applications. Their end users are using applications, enterprises are using applications, which are client to cloud. They go across all these domains. So the concept of slicing has to be now end to end because if you can create the slices of the networks on demand and deliver services using that, you can protect the traffic. You can provide or satisfy use cases that we have not thought through. For example, an enterprise may, might say, or some network provider might say, I want to create uh, a, a network, end to a network, which is isolated from the production environment so that I can try out new security functionality. You have to be able to do that. You have to be able to do end to end networks which are specific to a particular application so that you can isolate that application from other applications, other traffic. Those kind of possibilities have to be considered not just in the context of mobile network, but across the domains because applications are distributed, use cases are distributed, and requirements are distributed. That's MSPs, but why should enterprises also be excited? I think the enterprises have to be excited because, as I said earlier at the beginning, right, you have distributed workforce, you have distributed applications with SaaS transformations, increasingly use of the cloud, either with public cloud, edge cloud, or even on-prem cloud. Across all these things, the old model of I submit a ticket and the wait for services to be enabled does not work. People want more API-driven virtual networking. 
software driven networking even though underlying infrastructure is still has to be supported in physical appliances given that enterprises now can ask for such on demand pay as you go model where you do, you are able to add a new workforce if you have a um, uh, employee who moves from one place to another but still wants to connect to the network all those connectivities should be enabled on demand very easily and they're getting used to that using the public clouds so they expect that model to be extended everywhere and that's why i think enterprises are excited about this ability to consume networks in a uniform manner cloud to client to cloud and in azure manner well, final question, Raj. For operators that want to explore this journey, where do you recommend that they start? That's an excellent question. I think uh, we have multiple of these initiatives and they need to start looking at it as an end-to-end problem, which means think of a uniform platform layer that abstracts out underlying connectivity, no matter where you are in edge cloud, you are in public cloud, you are in a, a metro or on-prem and so on. If you can think of that, uniform platform layer that exposes APIs. By the way, 3GPP recently announced that they are going to create such a service creation model, agile, on demand, using a uniform platform layer. But that's for the mobile networks. I'm saying do that across the uh, all of these domains. You can use Kubernetes as a very good foundation for that because it provides this intent driven configuration automation, deployment to op automation. Some of the industry initiatives such as NAFIO, MCO and Kubernetes itself are very much ripe to be exploited. So operators should start from that, but take the end-to-end -end view and take advantage of slicing. You are looking at doing slicing. If you look at MVNO, that's a very primitive model for providing overlay network uh, to a, a customer from the operator, right? It doesn't do much. But if you combine that kind of model with end-to-end -end slicing, where you could have slices per application, slices per customer, slices per even subscriber. And each slice is isolated from performance and security point of view. Then now suddenly you are making your network a lot more valuable from which you can derive revenues. So think of investing in end-to-end -end slicing, think of investing in a disuniform platform layer I'm talking about, which allows you to have API driven service creation across all these domains. That would be a great start. Great advice. Raj, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your views on Network as a Service. Thank you, Guy. It was a pleasure.